The end of May 2013, Dudley Taft was our visitor in El Blues Music Cafe. Thank you for coming over here. My pleasure. I'm very happy to be here. In Europe or especially in Blues Moose Cafe? <laughs> well, uh, both. I, Blues Moose is awesome. Everybody here has been very, very nice. It's good to meet you and, and everybody on the crew here tonight. And uh, you, you make us feel welcome. And that's what I like about coming to Europe. There's a great love of music here that's maybe a little bit different than the U.S. Yeah, that's a beautiful point to start off this conversation. What's the difference because the, the rock, blues rock scene in, over here than in the States? I, th I think that, I mean, at least from my limited experience here, uh, I think the people are more willing to go out and see live music. And they, uh, you, a lot of times you see people bring their, their kids with them. And uh, well, in the U.S., you know, there's a strict re restriction, you know, 21 and over, and it's hard to play an all-ages show. And, and uh, I think the big difference is in the United States, everybody has a king-size bed, a big living room, and a TV, you know, the size of a house. And they work all day, and they go home, and they just want to drink a beer and watch TV. Whereas I think... It, at least the people that I've met in Europe, it's like you work hard all day, you know, you go home and change your shirt and go have a beer with your buddies at the bar, you know, and watch a game there or go see some music. I think this is people's living rooms in a way that's different than the U.S. The U.S. has to be an event. Why should I go out to a bar and see some band? Instead, the idea here is I want to go out and see. I've never seen these people before. First time we played sure. here, people said we wanted to see you because we've never seen you, and that's just to me. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's They're all curious. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. It's really wonderful. Curious for the new, and it's the second time uh, over in Europe. Is, is, am I am I correct in that? Yeah, yeah. We came uh, and we played some shows here in the Netherlands uh, last January. You bring your own band with you, and they from Seattle, Cincinnati, and New York City. How do you rehearsal? How do you get your yells done with such a vast difference? Well, these are guys that, um, you know, I played with in Seattle. Um, the uh, drummer that's with us tonight, Chris Layton, played on a bunch of the tracks on the new CD, Deep Deep Blue. And uh, we all played in Seattle for a while. I, I moved to North Carolina about uh, almost two years ago, and I had lived in Seattle for 25 years. So we really had played together for many years. And so it, that, was, that was easy for us to sort of fall back into, you know, playing together. But yeah, it is, it is difficult. It is difficult. But when you're flying, you know, acro halfway across the world, it's okay. It doesn't matter where you come from. We all land here and, and uh, practice a little bit and off we go. Who's Dudley Tuft? Where did this, he had his experience or his um, education from, musically-wise? Well, uh, you know, growing up in the Midwest, I grew up on, uh, you know, corn, potatoes, and rock and roll. I mean, really, we uh, as a child of the early 70s, I, you know, I, I grew up on British Invasion. I grew up on, uh, you know, Southern Rock, um, and also, you know, uh, some Texas Rock, too. But I, you know, I didn't really, I wasn't trying to get an education. I was just so curious about music that I listened to everything from Jimi Hendrix to Pink Floyd to Rush to Steely Dan to Bob Dylan, Lou Reed, David Bowie. These were all very important people to me. And when I was uh, only 13 years old, I knew that I, I was going to play guitar for the rest of my life. And I didn't care, you know about you know getting a, a business degree and going to school and being a lawyer and making real money <laughs> you know it, it just it it kind of drew me in it's a calling and uh, you know I just learned I just learned by trying to learn how to how to play other people's music you know you thought if ZZ Top can make a living with playing guitar and having a beard I can also have a go on that. <laughs> well you know yeah you did I heard it through the X Yes, that's true. I, 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 you know, ZZ Top is one of my all-time favorite bands because I, I think that there's this joy that comes through with their music and the sense of humor. 
you know, that you can really identify with, like ACDC is the same way, at least with the Bon Scott years, there was a, a sense of humor in their music, and uh, it made you feel good and you related to it, instead of just, you know, being something, something, you know, different for you to listen to, it was more of an experience that you shared. You know, so ZZ, ZZ Top for me was a lot like that. Also, Joe Walsh. Yeah, Joe you know, Walsh is the funny part of the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, he's he's really has a personality, it, and it shows in his lyrics and stuff. And I'm not sure if my sense of humor comes through in the lyrics, but um, you know, or maybe we'll see. I haven't tried to write a funny song, but I I, I write about what's interesting to me, and I, I hope that it comes across as good as some of the legends did to me. Well. Although, what I heard and at my uh, director's uh, mixing apparatus, it's not just blues or blues rock what you did. It's also had funk in it, it had some jazz style, and there's a lot of uh, different styles you mix, you blend in in your in your own. Is is that is that what you want it to be, or is that just happens if you make up the song? Well, I, you know, I think... I, I mean, it comes I, natural if you listen to it. That's what I mean. But I yeah. don't think it is. It's, it's, it's thought about. Well, I mean, there, there, there are certain things that are about, you know, if, let, let's say funk, for example, that's infectious. You know, all the, you know, the funkadelic parliament stuff. We've all heard, you know, uh, stuff in the, in the sort of uh, disco era. There was a lot of funk going on. You know, you can say the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, incorporate a lot of funk in their pop music. But also, you know, I, I, uh, I played a lot of songs written by the Meters, especially with, with John Kessler and Chris Layton playing with me tonight. And, uh, you know, we, we did a Tuesday night gig. And so uh, we, were, we called ourselves the Quantum Mechanics. And we decided that we were only going to play stuff that made us happy. <laughs> You know, we didn't. We were never gonna play Mustang Sally, you know, or Hold On Loosely, or whatever. You know, that people want to hear Freebird. You know, we decided we want to play some stuff that's cool for us, and I really enjoy that. So, yeah, there's a little bit of funk in there, like uh, Feeling Good Now on my new CDs. Kind of got a little bit of funk going on, some horns. But if I hear it in my head, then I just try to make it happen on the guitar. And you know, it's, it gets a little bit boring if you just only play blues, only play rock, only play blues rock. I don't know, you gotta kind of mix it up and... Never thought about an extra instrument, the keyboards and the, on, the, on the stage? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, <coughs> Costly to, to take them over, of course, and on a tour. Well, sure, it, there, there is uh, added expense with each person bringing them over and, and, you know, we're laying the foundation so we can afford more and more people. Actually, I think uh, our keyboard player, Eric, would have come this time um, if he could have, but he's a real busy guy and uh, he had some other important gigs. But uh, we, when we do uh, shows in Seattle, um, Eric plays with us. And Eric played on um, a, a lot of tracks on Deep Deep Blue, and he's a fantastic keyboard player. And uh, it would be great to have a keyboard player every night. You know, but you got to start with three wheels before you can put that fourth one on the ground. And then, you know, if I had my perfect band, I would have a horn section. I'd have background singers. <laughs> now, really, I mean, uh, I, I'm excited to see where this goes. You know, it's it, it can be a lot of fun to add different instruments and sounds because it has to be interesting to me so that I can have fun with it before I think, you know, I, it, it's really something that other people find interesting. Where should the Duff, Dudley Toft experience end then in a couple of years? With the big horn section with seven, eight people on stage and traveling the world? Ah, <laughs> uh, wow, I don't know. That's, that's the coolest thing about this uh, career is that you really never know where you're going to go, what's going to happen. You just sort of roll with the changes. And um, I was lucky enough to... Um, uh, and I ended up calling this producer named Tom Hambridge because a friend of mine, Lance Lopez, suggested him to me. And so uh, I talked to him, and he, he's a great songwriter and producer. He did the James Cotton record. He's done all the Buddy Guy records, all the George Thorogood records. Um, he did the Susan Tedeschi record that broke her out and won a Grammy. He's like, you know, won a lot of Grammys. And so I went to Nashville, and we wrote some songs together, which is different for me. You know, I want to try to branch out a little bit. I know that's not, you know... 
more instruments, but it's a different thing to do, you know, that I never thought would happen. So I think you just got to put yourself out there and see what happens. I mean, if I could have a horn section, that would be that would be bitching, you know. That means also that you're open for a producer to give any tips or good pointers. Uh, recording in CD. It's not Dudley Tav entering a music studio and said this is gonna record in my way. You're open for any suggestion by a person you admire. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> yeah, it's not always happening that way. Had some you thoughts know, in the studio. You know, uh, I, the buck stops here. You know, I, I, I am not like, you know, somebody that you hire that comes in and does something. Or I'm not somebody that's looking for people to write songs for me. So I'm a little bit stubborn when it comes to that. But I am open-minded. And if they have some good ideas and I can make it work for me, then I'll do it. But I'm not going to try something that I don't feel is comfortable. That makes sense. But having said that, Tom Hambridge, you know, he brought some interesting things to the table. And on this next record, I think you're going to see you know, further progression of, of what I'm doing. Um, you got two guitars with you, but, but mostly what uh, I saw was that a whole lot of pedals in front of you where you're uh, sometimes struggling with which which position they should be in and uh, that means also you're, you're experimenting with different guitar sounds. When does it end? When do you are satisfied with all the pedals you have and uh, you can create any sound you, uh, you like or are you still entering a music shop and head right down to the guitars and the pedals. That will never ever end. <laughs> will never end. The search for the perfect pedal. Um, I don't know, I really, I, I, to me, uh, there's a lot of variety in your guitar tones. That's why I have, I have four overdrive pedals, you know. I got, well, three overdrives and a fuzz. And a couple other things. I, I like I like the sonic palette of being able to do a lot of stuff. Being real clean and bright or kind of crunchy or, you know, kind of rock or just crazy over the top, you know, sounds like it's going to blow up, you know. That's that's interesting to me. You know, it's all part of the, it's all part of the palette that you paint from. And I, I, I like pedals. And yeah, it's a hassle. There's a, there's a new delay I'm using tonight. And I don't really know how to work it that good, so I'm figuring it out. But once I get it, once I get it dialed in, I won't even think about it. Okay, Dudley. I saw on the my guest how far we are in the studio. Thank you for uh, this interview, and we're gonna make a splendid show about it. Thank you for being in Blue Smooth Cafe, and see you on the road somewhere. Thanks to you. Thanks for having me. Hope to see you soon. And the last thing we want to ask if you want to stay. To